Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna do a Q&A. Actually, it's your questions, my answers, and I'm introducing you to Phoebe, our newest kitten. Is that just precious? My husband surprised us with her. She's seven weeks old. She has a little bow tie mouth. She's like, um, I was sleeping. Why are you? She has great eyes here. Ready? What? Do you see that? We think she has some Maine Coon in her. She's adopted. I mean, we don't know like her lineage or anything like that, do we? We just know that she's 100% cute. Right, Phoebes? Phoebster? Okay, good night. Okay, let's get into those questions. What do you wish you would have known when you started your YouTube channel? Uh, <laughs> everything? No, what I wish I would have known was um, better editing skills. Still need to know that. And um, when maybe a better name, a better YouTube channel name. When I look back at my older videos, I kind of cringe. Um, I cringe, I don't just kind of cringe. I just feel like I was sort of all over the place and I wanted to be funny and I wanted to be like different and I sort of didn't know how to do it. So it took me a while to kind of just get into a pattern or a kind of groove. So maybe that's it. But then I feel like the discovery process is such a huge thing. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, that might not answer your question. <laughs> Boy band of choice growing up. Well, that's funny because I was a child of the 80s. Actually, I was a teenager of the 80s. I was born in the 70s. So, <laughs> before, okay, so my love of Sean Cassidy started early. I was very young. And when that faded, it went to... I loved Wham and Duran Duran. I loved them. I didn't have posters. My friend Stacy did. Um, I George Michael was my first real concert. His Faith tour. That was that was so much fun. That was good. Best makeup skincare product ever. Um, who, who, like. I mean, it doesn't even exist yet. Um, best makeup skincare product ever. So, makeup product. I'm gonna say that right now, Fenty and Pat McGrath, and I know they're expensive, are kind of killing it. I mean, there really isn't anything that's a fail in those lines. Um, skincare, I gotta go with Paula's Choice and Beauty by Design. Paula's Choice for me is, I, I just know that anything I get of theirs can work on my skin because I feel like her whole entire premise is not, um, is the sensitive skin thing that my, my, you know. But Beauty by Design is really cool because it's customized and it's, um, well, it's, it's, custom matched so that you can always get what you like there too. So yeah. So if I'm shopping for myself, Paula's Choice, if I was like needed just like, hey, this is what I need, then it's Beauty by Design. And then um, oh, makeup. God. It's really hard. And then I'm thinking like 
best product ever. Well, right now I'm really loving my Wander Beauty Lash, my, my mascara. I don't know. I can't. Oh God. Can we go back to boy bands? Can we talk about Wham again? Okay. Um, how did you get into YouTube? Oh, well, so what happened was I, um, I wrote a blog and I've said this before. In fact, I have a best selling, hi, I am a New York Times best selling author. I should show you guys this. Hello. So this book is called I Just Want to Pee Alone and I will link it below if you want. You can get it on Amazon. It is, now I have to put this back between my Eiffel Tower bookends. I love those, by the way, home goods. Um, when I started blogging seven years, eight years ago, oh my, <clears throat> a long time ago, I friended a group of fellow writers. I mean, I have all these friends on the internet and writers, especially in the early days of blogging before it became so branded and so kind of influencer orientated, um, it was very much a community of writers and we all were kind of in a different niche of parenting styles in terms of we weren't mom bloggers that just kind of talked about housekeeping tips and great recipes and a beautiful day at the park. We were more like, holy crap, why do I hate my kids? They're kind of assholes, <laughs> you know, on a particular day. And then we were like, wait a minute, I feel that way too. You, you hate your kids? Oh, that's awesome. You know, we love our kids, by the way. Uh, but it was, and then we were kind of being humorous about it. And so we just found each other. And Jen Mann, she has several New York Times bestseller books. And she was like, I am going to make an anthology of writers collected together. And I'm going to publish it, self-publish it. And you guys are going to help promote it. And this is going to be so much fun. And so I just want to pee alone as a collection of essays, basically. You know, each chapter is a different writer. And we just have a funny parenting story. And so it did really well. It just, I mean, it really did well for a self-published mom blogger book. And we, after the first year, oh, and for self-published, that's like, you don't get on the New York Times list if you're self-published. And so we did, we sold enough copies to get on the New York Times list. So, um, so that was fun. However, so what happened there was we just started using different channels like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. We were just promoting our blog, promoting the book, and I have always loved makeup, and I started doing other funny videos like my Spanx tutorial and just some other stuff, and then I just started doing actual makeup videos as well. And so then blogging became kind of difficult because as your kids grow up and become teenagers, and Emma's an adult now, um, it's hard to write about them because, hello, they don't want to be out there on the internet for everybody to read about. You know, you can't talk about how you embarrassed them at their, you know, school concert. So, um, yeah, so then it just, I just focused on what I love, which is makeup and you guys. And so, yeah, well, that's how I got into YouTube. I got into YouTube because... I started talking, I would, I'd be like, okay, this, I need to talk about this. You know, it was like, I'm going to talk about this, not just write about it. And so some of my early videos are kind of ranting. Okay. Hardest part doing a YouTube channel and does my husband support it? My husband supports it so well in a quiet way. So basically he does not complain about any of my purchases, about all the camera equipment, remember, cause we're running a porno here. Just kidding, we're not. That's a joke from another video if you saw that. Um, yeah, we have camera equipment all over our master bedroom. We have makeup all over our master bedroom. Um, boxes from PR, crap, bubble wrap, right? Um, and he's just so patient. He just, he doesn't say anything. Like I complain about his crap all the time. Like, ah, your work stuff is, why do we have to have three monitors on our dining room table? You know, um, cause he works from home sometimes. So, uh, he's, he's great. And, um, 
the hardest part about YouTube is honestly just the the doing it and the kind of some weeks you just feel like you don't get any love like your view nobody's watching you you're not you're losing subscribers maybe because youtube's like cleaning up their bots or whatever so you're like oh i just lost 20 subscribers great which isn't that much because i know there's other accounts that lose like thousands and stuff like that or, or you're thinking did i offend someone you know it's kind of the wondering it's kind of the the feeling of being self-conscious like if I put that out there and people respond and then you have to just go no I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna do it because there's always those people out there that respond positively that say yes you're talking to me it was the same way with writing it was like I would stop myself before I wrote something and then people would be like and then I'd be like no 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 I gotta not get in my head and I'm just gonna do this and then I would get so many responses of people saying, thank you so much for saying this. You know, it's just what I've been thinking, but too afraid to say. And so YouTube is a lot like that too. And I don't want to be controversial, so I try it. But you never know what's going to be controversial. Like we have seen when somebody just doesn't like a palette and it becomes this drama. And I'm like, is that ever going to happen to me where I just... Kind of review something and I give it a ho-hum review and I get like all that influencers collab the collaborator their their subscribers at me like I don't know so sometimes that's that's a hard reality to be like <laughs> because I think sometimes you want every, you, what you got to be careful what you wish for because you might get it and I think on YouTube here we're all wishing for like more subscribers more sponsored put like money and fun and travel and it, right opportunity and then it's like if it comes to us what does it come with and I think that's yeah it's kind of scary but it's kind of fun so there you go okay hmm do you have any tips for reducing brown spots yes I do wear sunscreen you have to wear sunscreen if you are wearing sunscreen great but if you're not you're never going to get rid of your brown spots you're always just going to keep adding or darken what you have so sunscreen um two I think any kind of exfoliant whether it's a retinol product glycol glycolic product those are important too because getting that cell turnover getting um a lightening product so you can use uh is it koyak oh my god i already forgot what the the ingredient is and it was kind of like ooh controversial and then i had asked some dermatologists and what it is is if you get it at like it's just super super strength then yes it can um not only lighten your skin but then kind of create um, a sensitivity that will make your skin more susceptible to light so then it can create dark spots. Um, I think it's cognac acid, right? <sighs> anyway, my point is there are light, I would include some kind of lightening ingredient in your skincare routine. Licorice is good um, and uh, ferulic acid is good. So that is great if you can get laser treatments and you can afford them ipl is fantastic i like the revive light therapy light the lookbook i use that every day and i feel like it just kind of keeps my discoloration at a minimum i have discoloration but i do think it helps um so to, to just kind of keep it from developing what advice would you give your 18 year old self Yikes. Um, well, I would tell her to not worry about those lips because they're going to enjoy You're going to, you're going to like them. I used to be so self-conscious of my mouth. I would get comments about my mouth in high school that my lips were really big. And I think cause I was really thin whenever the thinner I get, the bigger my mouth is. <laughs> and I was pretty much thin and like, skinny so I had like this big old mouth so people were like uh, you know wow she's got like a horse face right so I'm kind of like I would tell her don't worry about the little boobs or the big mouth because you're just going to appreciate those in your 40s you're going to be like I got lips and I don't care that I don't have to wear a bra um and I would tell her 
Well, it's easy to say, don't worry about what other people think, but gosh darn it. Oh, and I would say, even though I ended up with a wonderful husband, I had to date a few bad fish, right? Bad fish, you know what I mean? Um, so I would tell her to listen to your gut and follow those and, and pay attention to those red flags when it comes to whether it's dating or relationships because you, the, those red flags are there for a reason and your instinct is usually right. So run. No. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your husband's career? Are you a work from home boss, babe? I am. I do work from home. I am so happy that I've been a stay at home mom since day one. I was actually on bed rest while I was pregnant with Emma. So I couldn't leave the house while I was pregnant with her. So that sucked. But, um, I've been very fortunate. My husband, we were very diligent with our, um, when we were dual income as a married couple before kids, we saved everything. My husband is very frugal. Fruit, yeah. And he's very good with investments. He's really good about, when I say investments, I don't mean like, we don't have like some Cayman Island account, I promise you. Um, and he's, a, he, like his father, he, and like my parents, we are just kind of one of those people where we just live within or under our means. And that has always been like, if you can afford something, that's great, but maybe just go one notch cheaper and then put the rest of the money in savings. You know, we've already got our kids college fund. Um, we, we set aside that for that, started that when they were born. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what is his career? Oh, I can work from home. Yes, I can do this. I can dabble because he's been so good about that. Um, he is a sales director. Um, he works for a company. He's worked for, he's worked in sales for 25 years and he's really good at it. So I am just grateful that when we go buy a car, he's the one that negotiates and it's awesome. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a sales manager and he works for, he's always worked for like either startup companies or start or software companies. So he, um, he sold copiers back in the nineties. And I think if you sell copiers door to door, like business to business, you can do anything. Okay. All right. Best thing you ever ate. Oh, I have so many things. Like, look at me. I'm just like, I could, I could talk about food like for days. Mm. So, so if you've never had raclette in the Alps <laughs> on a mountain outside where they scrape the melted cheese off the big hunk of it and put it on that slab of bread, it is so good. It is so, so good. That was, that's, that's something I won't forget. And I was 11 years old when I ate that and I can still remember it. But other than that, I would say, I mean, best thing I ever ate. There's a bakery here in West Seattle called Bakery Nouveau. And I always am sharing it with you on my Instagram and they have the most amazing croissants. And that chef, that pastry chef, has won awards in France. Like he is, he, I think he's French or German, but he's in Seattle and he is a worldwide award winning pastry chef. And he's the best, he's, it, it, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. I always tell people, if you're in Seattle, you have to go to Bakery Nouveau. Yeah. Okay. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Paris. <laughs> I've never been to Paris. I've been to France. I've been to the French Alps. I've been all over Europe. I want to go to Paris. Um, I also want to go to something like Fiji. You know, I want to go to like someplace exotic um, that I've never been to. Um, I kind of want to go to Asia. Like I'm a little bit nervous because it just seems so different and like would I be able to navigate and communicate and like it, it's intimidating to me but I would love the idea of traveling to Thailand or um yeah I would love to and especially eat the cuisine but I really want to go to Paris I do 
Have you tried Junk Elephant products? I'm interested, but they are expensive. I have tried them. Um, I find them to be wonderful. I feel like it's, you know, you it, don't go to like La Mer and Sicily Paris and spend $200 or something. Go to Drunk Elephant and spend 70 But if you don't want to do that, go to Paula's Choice or Beauty by Design or The Ordinary or even some drugstore stuff um, um, on like K-Beauty. Uh, because if you, if, if Drunk Elephant is out of your budget, there are some other things that you can find dupes for. And, um, but it is good. If you, I think if you try the products, you will definitely be pleased. And, um, oh, and yes, this is my primary career. Oh, a couple of you asked, um, what do you do and what, what do you do now? And what did you do before YouTube? And so what, I, this is the only thing I do for work, like, is this, I don't, you know, like work at Starbucks or work at like a real estate office or something like that. I don't have a job outside the house, but before, um, kids, I did retail and I did, a, I was an executive assistant for um, an environmental company for the VP, uh, which it was a very strange situation because I was way out of my element. Like I didn't know what the heck they were talking about, but I was like really good at being efficient and like I was good with computers and, and working with people. So it was kind of like I could bullshit my way so easily which is kind of what I did at conferences. But um, but like I was sort of the person who handled the PR and the marketing and the reception and I did, yeah, it was this tiny company. And so when you're a tiny company, you do a lot of things. So yeah, so I know what it's like to kind of like put on a trade show. Um, host a, uh, a board luncheon for, you know, like the former director of the FBI. I, yeah, strange stuff like that. Um, or the director of the EPA at the time, which was during the Clinton administration. Like this was a long time ago. So what else? Um, oh, and then I, I worked retail from apparel to cosmetics, Nordstrom, you know, you name it. I also worked at radio station, radio and TV stations locally because that's what I had to do when I, in order to get my degree in journalism. So I've worked um, on radio and television behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. You guys asked about best boy band, but you didn't ask about best girl band. Bananarama, right? I mean, Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox. Oh my God. Sting. I probably listened to Annie Lennox and Sting on my Walkman a million times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you guys so much for asking these questions. It warms my heart that you want to know about me. And I love this. If you want to ask any other questions in the comments, feel free. I'll answer them. And I hope if you've come across my channel for the first time, you stick around and subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notifications when I post. Please click a like on this video and all that good stuff. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.